Hi, I'm Mark Ray, and welcome to Honourable Mentions, a podcast where each episode a special guest will talk to me about a video game that, for whatever reason, doesn't quite make their all-time list, but really does deserve an honourable mention. Honourable Mentions has always been intended to be a podcast series that runs in seasons, consisting of six episodes. The reason for this is to allow me time to be able to find and contact a roster of interesting guests to join me on the show. As this is episode 6, and the last episode in the inaugural season, I thought we needed to send it off with a bit of a bang by chatting to a showstopper. Some may know this episode's guest simply as Hoops, Juice or The Kid. Others may know him as editor-at-large over at Polygon.com or the co-host of such podcasts as My Brother, My Brother and Me, The Adventure Zone, Sawbones and Polygon's Quality Control. I, however, know him as the lovely Mr. Justin McElroy. Coming up is what he had to say about his honourable mention. Justin, thank you so much for joining me on Honourable Mentions. Um, it's an absolute honour to have you on. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's been, that's great. It's great. I, you know, it's one of those things where um, uh, you, you have your ultimate list of people that you, you want to have on. And um, your name is high, high, high on that list. And for you to turn oh, I was, say, I was hoping for towards the bottom. Like, no, 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 higher. No, no. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You want to be sort of middle. You don't want to be. Too, you don't want to be too near the top because there's a lot of pressure. That's right. You know? So you want to be sort of that middle, middle ground, don't you? So I was going to ask you. Uh, the first questions are kind of uh, getting to know you questions. Um, mm-hmm. But I want to ask you, as it's between the Christmas, you know, the Christmas period, as it were, between Christmas and New Year's. Um, there's loads of sort of game of the year lists going around and people's end of the year lists and stuff. Uh, and this show is about lists and kind of not quite making the list and stuff. So what I wanted to know from you is, do you find, you know, as editor of like one of the biggest gaming websites in the world, um, do you find game of the year lists kind of a good thing, a bad thing, a necessary evil? Do you enjoy making them Are they great I, in your life? I, I, I'm sort of split on the one hand. I think the the ranking of games is is sort of silly and futile. Yeah. And I think pretty much anybody who uh, is in this industry for any amount of time um, knows how sort of silly and futile that is. Yeah. People seem to like it, though. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's sort of like review scores, I think, where there's this uh, divide between the people that create the thing wanting to use them or, or not and the people who sort of consume the thing and whether or not they – like it um but i so i think ranking the games is kind of silly um that said i do really like game of the year lists because it's a really good opportunity you know i'm i'm older now i have a child of my own i don't have nearly as much time as i used to to sort of try to play everything and so for me game of the year is a really nice way to find out about games that i missed throughout the year and sort of take stock of of how the year has been, broadly speaking, but it's where I found I find out about a lot of stuff that I might uh, yeah. uh, otherwise have missed. So I really like that aspect of it. Fantastic, fantastic. So you use it more of a sort of a temperature gauge for the year, sort of thing. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah. and and a, a recommendation thing. Um, yeah, it's also a way of me to judge the taste levels of my um, coworkers. I was going to say ber- berate them for not agreeing with me <laughs> unilaterally. <laughs> nice, nice, uh, harsh but fair, boss. Then. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. oh gosh, I'm not even the boss. I'm uh, not even anywhere near the boss anymore. I'm I'm the editor at large uh, now. Yeah, so I, I, I just kind of a uh, high a, a wanderer, writing <laughs> and recording whatever you sort of moves in. into my field of view, whatever yeah. nobody else wants to do. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so let's get a feel for you then and your kind of personality within sort of the games you like. Um, mm-hmm. So in no particular order then, as you don't like ranking things. Um, what would you class ahead of your honorable mention? What sort of keeps this out of your kind of pinnacle of gaming? Um, <laughs> there, uh, so I think the reason that my honorable mention is not in my, my personal list is that I tend to really prize, um, narrative, um, in my, in my, in the games that I really care right. about. Um, some of my favorites include like, um, I really love Skyrim. Uh, Fable Two is a big favorite of mine. I love Sea Man. Oh, yeah. uh, nice. that, that's a great sort of un, unconventional mm. narrative type game. Um, but I really love uh, uh, story in in games, um, and and I prize that really highly. So for me, 
the, the game that I brought to discuss does not reach that bar. It doesn't <laughs> provide that level of uh, of uh, a, a a narrative depth. achievement of depth. Right. It's yeah. just really fun. Um, and and it's also one. It's it's really fun and also one that sort of history moved past. <laughs> I think, and, <laughs> and I and I like to tr- to try to uh, uh, you know keep people focused on on that stuff and 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 to remind uh, people that that games like this existed. But yeah, those are sort of my uh, my my favorite. I'm sure there are others that I that are escaping. I like There's Alan like, Wake is another one that I I like a really right. solid mesh of mechanics and narrative usually so, so it's something, something like a bioshock or like you say an alan wake or something, something yeah exactly. you can really get your teeth great. Into. yeah that's my that's my bag fantastic fantastic so then uh we we get to your your kind of honorable mention that as you've alluded to it already um now I, i'll let you start actually what is the game you've brought uh to me or to us today to talk about as your game is <laughs> the game is 50 cent Blood on the sand. Superb. Now, I'm not going to lie. When you sent me the email for this, I massively side-eyed it. Like, what? This this is nearly on your top games of all time list. How? Yep. How? How? Yep. What? Why? When? Who? What? Uh, and then, explain, are, is there sir? a second half of the story where you like? Yeah. Realized my my genius. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to hearing see, that. Now, now, this is very lucky because. Obviously, um, a lot of the people I've had on uh, so far, I mean, I've only had five people on so far, you're the sixth. They've all been people that I kind of uh, listen to on podcasts and stuff and, and that kind of thing. But with you, I had the rare distinction of being able to go to the review and actually read exactly what you thought about this game. And then yes. suddenly, boom, there it was. It all hoved into view. So please, sir, the floor is yours. Please explain to us why 50 Cent Blood on the Sand. What is it about this game? <laughs> Um, okay, so 50 Cent Blood on the Sand is, uh, it, <laughs> I, it love is, the, I love the way you're stalling already. I'm trying to catch it. No, it's <laughs> like, it, it's one of these games that it layers these really smart, mecha- it's an action game, third yes. person action game, the, the type of which that I feel like it really isn't in vogue as much anymore. I mean, we certainly have some, but there was a period where a lot of these sorts of games were being made um, yeah. in the wake of, I think, Gears of War. Uh, a lot of people wanted to get onto that that bandwagon. Right. Um, so what, what 50 Cent Blood on the Sand does is it takes that third-person action thing that uh, Gears of War does and speeds it up pretty considerably <laughs> um, to make something that feels a lot more arcadey. And then it layers on top of that a... Um, uh, sort of a combo meter type thing that just constantly rewards you for creating as much mayhem as possible and doing it as, as sort of fluidly as possible. And now that won't sound revolutionary here no. um, because a lot of games have sort of built on that idea um, it, it, as time went by, but it was th- in the moment it was just so uh, uh, ludicrous and so <laughs> silly and so didn't take itself seriously, uh, especially when we were in a period that I'm not sure we're completely out of yet, but right. in a period where in the wake of also Gears of War, I think there was a, a real tonal flatness. Yeah, to everything was brown and gray. Brown and, and shiny um, also and very and grim. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that, 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 that this game issues a lot of that in in service of just making it a sort of fun and silly as as humanly possible um and so it's really uh uh it, it's just silly and it's very it's fun it's really great fun with a friend um right. you 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 can uh, if you have a co-op partner um they join as one of the other members of uh, 50 cents uh, uh g unit tony io <laughs> Lloyd Banks and DJ Wu Kid, uh, which the, I remember. The only way you can make that sound sort of more sort of uh, white and and straight is is if I were to say G Unit. I think. Cause... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm right on the edge. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> the more, more white and awkward. Then... Well, that okay. So that's one of the other things that's really funny about Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand. Right. Is it was developed by a British studio yes. that really 
didn't do much at all. Swordfish Studios, um, which just made a handful of games. Um, They made a rugby game and a cricket game and... Then a 50 cent game. And a 50 cent game. They also did a um, a first person shooter called Cold Winter that I defy anyone to remember anything about. Right. Um, uh, and 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 then after 50 cent on the sand, um, they closed. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So yeah. So that's sort of the the long and short history of Swordfish Studios. The reason that I mention it is. Um, one of the most bizarre game things about this game, and there are many very strange things, but the 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 script is just riddled with um, British idioms, right? That that the that the members of G unit G unit and Fifty Cent are saying. So like, you can literally hear like uh, DJ Woo Kid yeah, <laughs> tell Fifty Cent that something is safe as houses. <laughs> Super. <it's like>, <laughs> What? Yes, what? mate. Safe that, as houses, mate. You know, nice. Like it. It's just, it's, it's, that sound, it's, it's like when, and, and, and please forgive me, but uh, when, when someone from America says the word bollocks. Yeah. It yeah. never sounds quite right. And it's just got the wrong emphasis. It's just, and it, or like pretty much every line of recorded dialogue in Heavy Rain. That's right. I mean, basically, like the entire <laughs> game is like that. But yeah. it's just like, it's so strange to hear like that, like, uh, or that the, when they were recording their VO, that n- nobody from GO was like, "Hey, this isn't something that American people yeah. ever say." Like, are, I don't. Are think you that sure this you want be... me to say this? And what does this even mean? Though they just were like, uh, "There's a great, <laughs> there's a great." Uh, <laughs> actually, I, when I was researching this game to try to refresh myself, there's a great quote from uh, Jeff Gerswin. He reviewed it for Giant Bomb. He said it, the game has a lot of half-assed dialogue that usually is delivered by people who sound like they're they have a plane to catch, which <laughs> which is a, a very accurate uh, representation of and to be honest, he's above the sand. They were probably um, getting on a G six somewhere in the next fifteen minutes. Right. Exactly. 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 So, what is it about? I mean, you've told us that it's fun and it's silly, but what is it that kind of? Um, because this this game's a byword for this is this game's a joke. I mean, it's it's known as kind of uh, you, you throw it out there when when someone says, "Oh yeah, oh uh, I'm going to go. Oh, we're going to play a terrible game. Oh no, yeah, but it's no fifty cent blood on the sand." You know, it's it's seen as a as, as a joke, as a silly thing. So what? what? Why? What is this kind of the strange thing about it? And and I will yeah. say I will say this on the one on the one hand, I I. I this is a this is a broad pronouncement for me, but right. I I would I would say and I'm trying to think of how to a, a delicately phrase this, but <laughs> I think that among game reviewers, and I don't give myself a pass here, but I think among game reviewers, broadly speaking, there's probably uh, this is probably not like the the world of rap and specifically the right. sort of uh, fifty cents specific brand, brand of rap is probably not something that a lot of game reviewers are are familiar with and 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 I think that like that aesthetic is part of why it seems silly. I mean anytime that you have a game starring a real person there's going to be some amount of silliness there because I think it's an inherently sort of silly thing. I oh, mean it yeah. feels like I a, mean, it's a massive project. yeah it's a massive vanity project isn't it? It's a massive ego stroke. Mhm. And this is actually the sequel to Fifty Cent Bulletproof. It. Yeah. It's the second game. And which I, is wild. It's a sequel to a PSP game. Yeah, it's How bizarre. Weird is that? There's also like this very broad, like if you look at the reviews for the game, they are almost, it is wild how consistent they are. Yeah. They are almost all sevens. I mean, like to it, CVG, Edge, Eurogamer, Game Informer, GameSpot, Game Trailers, uh, all gave it exactly a seven. So question uh, for you then, uh, yeah. being someone who deals in sort of game reviews and, and scores and things, mm-hmm. is that, how unusual is that? I mean, is that... Is that just someone, a, a whole raft of people going, I don't know what to give this. Stick a seven on it. Um, I think that this this also has gotten better, but I think that for a good amount of time, seven was a weird sort of safe area for game review scores. Right. It's like, I don't want to really, I don't really know what to make of this. I don't really, can't take much of a stand on it. Uh, let's say seven. I think that that's probably pretty fair. And okay. and, and a lot of people... I think this was a little later in the generation, so for a lot of people, it's like I don't know. It's pretty good. Um, I, it doesn't jump ahead of the of a lot of the other games on, on the console, but it doesn't lag behind them. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and say seven. So, 
Right. Uh, I think that that's I think that that's definitely part of it. Um, I, the other part of it that I think is like a- actually really fair is that the story is pretty nonsensical. I mean, it doesn't make yeah. a lot of sense, and there's a lot of stuff that's like kind of gross, like fifty. Uh, almost exclusively refers to the one female character in the uh, game as bitch, almost like exclusively, yeah. which is like not great. So there's a lot of stuff like that that this is sort of jarring and also makes it something that I can't like fully endorse. No, you um, can't throw your weight behind that, I suppose. Yeah, and yeah. it's and that's that's you know I, I I think that it is that stuff should be like I think in every game that stuff should be criticized and evaluated because it's a piece of art and you have to take the whole of it into account. Yeah. Um, but I do think 50 simple on the sand is interesting because, and, and there, I think part of the reason it sticks in my craw is that I don't, I, I find a lot of the story objectionable. I think the story actually by itself is nonsense and the music of the game doesn't really speak to me at all, but it's really fun and yeah. it's amazing how much, you can sort of ignore um, it, it, or, or gloss over, I guess, if if the core thing is just fun to play. Yeah. Um, and 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 I, I I think that's really an interesting thing about Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand. So from reading your uh, your review on it, you, you brought up the club a few times. Yeah. And I thought that was a really interesting comparison to make. In that it seemed to be that you were kind of it making out the this like the club seemed to be a game that never it was a great idea had some great mechanics but was you know it was just hung around that one mechanic of like sort of almost um you know put a point scoring through a through a third person shooter mm-hmm. but it never had enough game there to really um satisfy people for the for you know a high price tag whereas 50 cent sort of tax this on to a third person shooter that has a bit of a story and a bit of interest so maybe 50 cent blood on the sand is like a slight refinement of this of the club like a better um, you know iteration of that it's really interesting because you see that in a lot of games you see um you see the, the it, us build a vocabulary around like what is fun and oh. what works and a lot of games because there is so much to explore with this medium and because it is relatively nascent, you see a lot of games that establish a, a thought or a kind of gaming vocabulary, but yeah. don't really build an entire cohesive product around them. Um, if you're lucky, you get to iterate on your own thing and make it into something really special. I'm thinking here specifically of like Assassin's Creed, I think is a great yeah. example of this where they had a core structure that was super interesting, but they didn't actually make a great game around it. And then they got the chance to iterate on it and improve on that. Um, I think the, and I mean, you could say the same thing almost about mirror's edge, except I didn't think the second mirror's edge was, yeah, was that much of an improvement, it. but it did establish that idea in sort of the conscious, uh, of the public. And I think it, it other games built on, on what they did there, but oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, they definitely were looking at, um, you know the 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 ideas of the club. I'm assuming they were released around a year apart, oh. so I'm assuming that 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 they were building off one another. But it was fresh uh, in the mind, as it were. Yeah, exactly. Um, but 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 yeah, for sure. I think it was absolutely building on some of those ideas. Fantastic. So you you were saying like the kind of getting back to the story and stuff. Um, one thing I was going to ask you is, I was watching the videos of this and was thinking, what what makes this fun what makes this enjoyable because obviously like you've got the, the the score point of it but the actual mechanics the actual physical like you know shooting and stuff it, it was looked pretty solid and then, then i kind of realized that what obviously made this so much fun was just the sheer absurdity of the earnestness of the main characters and how they were just so determined to get their skull or whatever that's all they want they and just want it one track it is completely one track and they're so like that, there's no nod or wink or anything. It's just so earnest. It's played completely straight. The yeah. last, the last boss, the bosses that you fight in this game are all helicopters, <laughs> and no one ever is like, "Oh no, another helicopter." It's Whoops. just that's what we're fighting is helicopters. And yes, the the whole plot of the game is about them trying to get a diamond encrusted skull back, and also like, it's 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 also I think kind of unintentionally hilarious to see this real person 
put into this scenario and that pretty much any real person you put into this sort of game is going to be hilarious. But this idea that it's almost like a 50 cent fever dream of like what he would do if someone stole his diamond encrusted skull, like how he would yeah. uh, uh, fight back against well, it's not even is just 50 just cent terrible. himself, but 50 cent, the projected brand that he wants. Right. To sort of right. Portray. If my brand went after my diamond encrusted skull, what would it be? What like? would it do? Yeah. In, in in a nondescript kind of uh, Middle Eastern zone, it's yeah. It, it was I just found it hilarious, absolutely, yeah. absolutely hilarious. It was almost as though this is kind of like this game is the kind of Fast and Furious and indispensable uh, indispensables. That's it. Hmm? Yeah, that's it. I always get that mixed up. I want to say indestructibles, and it's not um, of the video game world of the, uh, as that kind of thing of just like you're sitting there and you know it's trash. You know it's just completely schlocky and cheesy and ridiculous, but you can't stop watching. And I, I imagine it's the same as you just can't stop playing it. Well, there's I talked about this in a review many years ago. Um, that th- there are a lot of games that are so bad they're good. They're well, no, sorry. There's a lot of movies that are so bad they're good. Right. And so you watch them, and oh, this is hysterical. You know the 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 room or the apple or whatever you want to pick the the you know they're they're terrible and that's what makes them funny it's very rare that a game um can be so bad it's funny because you still have to play it and like if it's and and that's a miserable experience you can't it's harder just to like play and laugh at because you're actually having to participate in it 50 cent is a is a rare jewel of a thing that is very fun to play and also is surrounded by like narrative garbage and like that's really <laughs> funny is like i can enjoy the surreality and nonsense of the story but also enjoy the mechanics which are are really well constructed yeah there's part of me that's watching this and was just thinking if you just reskin this as nathan drake and you know put it out on a vita no one would know you know, no one would know what this game is. You know, same story, same everything. You, you, you'd, get <laughs> away, you'd probably get away with it. Palette swap, yeah. That's it. That's it. Unbelievable. But no, oh, this is excellent. That's superb. So, what is it about this game? I mean, I know you said a few things, but um, what is it about this game that like really does keep it just off your top list? What what keeps it outside of your list? Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't succeed at enough. It's definitely a really fun novelty that in. When it came out, I was recording the Joystick podcast a long, long time ago, and it was a game that we all sort of coalesced around and championed because it you could very easily dismiss it for all these um, exterior things, but you would be missing what makes it really fun and funny and special. Uh, but I think that you... But but those things still do exist. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to I think it's fine to like appreciate something and even love something and still be able to recognize that there are parts of this that are very much not great. You yeah. know, that other people have like actually tried to do well and have succeeded at doing well, um, but 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 are 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 much more successful. So like while I can appreciate the charm of a poorly told story and poorly recorded dialogue. Um, that that is not enough to for for me to uh, 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 sort of give it the 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 stamp of approval as being on, <laughs> Justin on my McElroy personal gold scene. yeah but yeah <laughs> I'm gonna have to make that for you at one point at some point just any, put it on any game that you know this has the Justin McElroy seal of approval <laughs> uh, right what, what was I gonna say um, next question so if you had to now nowadays obviously someone someone has been inspired by what you've said about this game and, and you they want to see what this hilarious mess is all about. How do you sell it to them? How, how, how do you know, this comes up in conversation at a bar and um, someone says, Oh, that sounds interesting. How do you really sell it to them? How do you, how do you get someone to buy this game and, and kind of, I know. think you just have to show, like you just pull up the gameplay footage of like, 50 cent tearing through this town and blowing up helicopters and all the while with everything you do. And like, I mean, everything you just get like huge rewards for every action. There's just like money being thrown at you constantly for like every (laughs) action that you take. It's like, you've just done the greatest video game achievement of all time. Um, And until you, I think if you see the level of like absurd, power fantasy that 50 cent is i think i think you could get it fairly quickly god fantastic fantastic right so um so my last question um we're here pretty quickly but we'll ask you anyway 
if you were to get anyone in the world to come on this show and hear them talk about their honourable mention, um, who would you like to have on and why? Oh, gosh. That that's is the one a, that, it's the one that stumps everyone. That's a hard question. Let me think. Hmm. It's the kind of person who, you know, you just absolutely, they've got, you know, they're out there, they're, you know, it's the person that you, you're inside their head, you know? I think it would be really interesting to, uh, you know what, who I'd like to hear is uh, Jonathan Blow. Really? I'd like to hear Jonathan Blow because that cat works for a very long time on his games. Yeah. Um, and they're very distinct and, and interesting. And I'd be really interested to hear like the stuff that he, not the stuff that he's like proud of liking, the stuff that it would yeah, go yeah, on yeah. his list. But the stuff that he's just a little bit embarrassed about. That's, yeah, yeah. I think that would be a treat. Yeah, that that kind of uh, what's what's the phrase I'm looking for? The um the kind of you know guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that's strange because like you obviously you think of Jonathan Blown, he's, he seems like quite a staid character. You mm -hmm. know, you, you really want him to just be like like you say a fifty cent blood on the sand. You want him to have something just so ridiculously Some skeleton in his closet. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Like it, it just loves like Hello Kitty roller rescue. Or yeah, <laughs> so, something like that. Really, really, something absolutely absurd. That would be that would be superb. Well, I'll have to try and I'll have to send him a, a tweet like I did with yourself and uh, see so yeah. if I can get him on. Because some of the other guys with actually, you you can answer this question for me because you're probably best positioned for this. But um, some of the previous uh, answers to that question I've had have been: um, Would I be able to get Clint Hocking on my show, or Prob John Carmack? Which of those, um, between those, which have I got more of a chance of, uh, of getting on the show? I think probably Clint Hawking because he has a lot of ideas about games. And I think that by and large, and I don't mean to disparage him mm. anyway, but I don't think John Carmack is as interested in games. Yeah. I think it's technology that's much more interesting to yeah. him. This was a po podcast about rockets. Yeah, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll for in. sure. What are, What is his just under his favorite rockets of all time? <laughs> but I think that you, you would get, have something there. Which stage do you prefer? Yeah, yeah well, not what you prefer, but what's the one just below the ones you prefer? What's like your eleventh favorite stage of rock? <laughs> yeah, the one that doesn't quite blow off, you know, just explodes into <laughs> a million a million pieces, but you know, just you know, just keeps together and just you know gets it propelled. Yeah, that'd be superb. Um, well, that's it. We're we're at the end of the show. Uh, this has been an absolute, you know, uh, a blast for me. So thank you very much for coming on. Um, have you got anything anything that you want to promote personally? I mean, there's enough podcasts and, and things like that that you do that you really you know really do need to talk about because they're amazing but uh, is there anyone is there anyone that you would like to promote as well like just to talk about or get people to go and read um all my podcasts are at mcelroyshows.com m-c-e-l-r-o-y and all the stuff i do for polygon is at polygon.com so those are the two places to go fantastic fantastic well as i said thank you so much for joining me um this has just been an absolute honor and uh hopefully i'll get to speak to you again very soon all right, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, bye-bye. The end of Season 1 of Honourable Mentions is now upon us, but never fear, planning is already underway for Season 2. All that's left for me to say is a huge, huge thank you to Justin for finding the time in his busy schedule to join me for a chat on this episode, and to point out that if you've enjoyed this episode or any other episode in Season 1, please do leave a review on iTunes. And if you have any thoughts or comments on this or any other episode in the season, please do get in contact with me on Twitter at ch4zzwe or via email at email at theaibots.com. Thank you so much for listening.